Hey everyone, my name is Tegan and welcome back to Tandy Writes. Today I wanted to start on a new video series for this channel about my publishing company called Little Oaks Independent Publishing and maybe make a series of videos introducing self-publishing from the very easy beginner stages, how you can do pretty much everything yourself if you want to, publishing on a budget, all those kinds of things. So for this first video today I wanted to talk about self-publishing a short story because that's the project I'm working on right now and I'm planning an ebook and a physical release. So it's something that I can talk about in all stages and I'm doing every part myself. So I can hopefully give some insight into every part of this process. So some backstory for the short story. The short story is set in the universe of Paper Forests, which is my second novel, my first contemporary fantasy though. It is set immediately after the events of this book and it is about one of the characters that I brushed upon in this book didn't have time to explore or a reason to explore honestly and I also won't have a reason to delve too deep into their backstory in other books so I thought you know I'm gonna write a short story for this and when I get around to publishing the hardback edition of this it will be included in this book as bonus content but I also wanted to publish it as its own standalone thing now while I experiment with I guess writing short stories in general getting into a new kind of publishing process and just again planning on doing everything myself because I am still learning even though I have been self-publishing for many many years now because things are constantly changing, my skills are constantly growing and developing and I'm learning how to just do everything. Believe it or not the first thing I did for this short story was the cover and the title which is a very backwards way of going about it but I already knew what character from the book I want to write a story on. I had one kind of key plot point, but I needed a lot more time to think. Also, I hadn't written a short story before, so I needed some more time to literally just plot, plan in my head, get the inspiration rolling. And as I was thinking about that, I knew what the title was going to be. I knew roughly what I wanted the cover to be. So I wanted it to be very clearly in the same universe as this one. I wanted it to be blue, foresty use this font for the my author name and this font for the paper word. I needed some kind of decoration, decorative font for the main title and so I knew what I wanted it to look like. So I thought as I'm still plotting the story itself, I'm going to make the cover. I am now going to show you every version of the cover I came up with in order and I think this is the first full cover I've done entirely by myself. I've for all my other releases, I've had the cover made for me, usually out of a pre-made ebook cover, so it's very affordable. But I did do the, the rest of the, what do you call it, the rest of the jacket, the wraparound image, all those kinds of things myself. So I had an idea of how to go about cover, but also I've read and witnessed many books in my years, so I think I know how to make a cover in a sense. But this starts off almost embarrassingly bad, but we're going to go into it. The first version of the cover, I wanted to stick very, very close to the original Paper Forest cover in terms of the text. So the author name being the same font as the word paper and the big decorative swirly fancy font for this one. The background for this cover, I think is, ooh, I think it's like this bit here, like very zoomed in because I hadn't decided what I wanted the background or the main focus point of the cover to be yet. I wanted to be foresty. I thought I wanted to go for a forest image in general, so it would be a lot simpler than this person, and then all my covers wouldn't have people on. It would be something different. It would be kind of clear that it's not a main novel of the series. It was something else. It was supplementary content. The next version of the cover is very similar. I went through and tried to like smooth out the font because it had this almost chalky, rustic... I don't know if it was the story, but I blanked on terminology today. But it had these rough around the edges vibe and I wanted it to be smooth to match my original cover. But this is the point where I realised that yeah, I'm going to need to find a good like stock image that, that, that in terms of licensing I can use. Because it wasn't working. But I also realised that this font wasn't working for me in this context. But I did love the font so much. So I started playing around with it. Um, in the description below, I will put the names of all the fonts I've used, all the images I've used, all the software I've used, just so there's that full record, just in case everyone is interested. I believe this one's called Cherry Blossoms, though. It's on Adobe fonts. It is free for personal and commercial use. I commit to this one. I was playing around. And this is the first time I've really experimented with typography in Photoshop and like all the different glyphs and all the different kind of letters and just typography in general, because I've never been very experimental with it but I was having so much fun. I'm very happy to admit, I had a great time 
putting these words together and then linking up the letters and making it flow and fit together and it when i got this title right i i knew it was going somewhere it all clicked in my head i knew what i wanted to do the next stage is pretty much the same but it's where i settled on like okay i'm going to use just a forest image and i'm going to make it blue it's going to be very clearly in the same universe as this but it's not going to be a copy or a rip off they're going to be connected it's going to be all good so that stage is pretty much the same but it's light blue so i thought if all my covers are dark blue why don't i just switch up and make the short stories light blue just to have it more like visually different and also so i wanted to focus on like the light blue elements here which is where i was drawing for in the first place but that is the same image as the last one it's the same text as the last one i just started messing around with i believe gradient maps or maybe the hsl colorize setting can't quite remember right now but i was just experimenting with colors and now we get to where the cover again finally came together for me i was what i was trying to work out how the original artist made this and i just thought you know i'm just going to play around i'm not going to rip off the cover i'm just going to experiment so I found this image of a girl kind of like posed a bit. It was in black and white. I thought, okay, I'll have this. I can make it blue and I can use some layer masks and layer modes to kind of, to layer the forest image over the top. And I found out that because the bottom of the forest image is so dark, that if I set it to lighten, it will like very nicely mask and frame the figure. But yeah, I took this image and I am in love and obsessed with how it works because I've experimented with layer modes a lot in the past. That is just a very key element of my photography for blending, but I've never seen it work this well for what I was doing. So I had such a high contrast image, like very deep blacks, very bright highlights. And when you layer the forest image over the top, which also has very deep darks and very bright lights, bright whites even, it works so well with the light and layer mode. And then here you can see that I settled on, I'm going back to just very simple, this font for the author name, the same for the subtitle. Again, so it has similar typographic features of the other cover. But yes, I finally got the composition perfect how I wanted for this image. The colours were right, the fonts were right, it was all right. And then the paperback cover is the exact same, just about the subtitle. Cause I don't think you needed that extra information on the cover for the paperback because the paperback has a back cover as well. You don't, you don't need all this thing. And I love the simplicity of it. And I love how it looks next to this. And in conclusion, that is how I made the cover. I should have mentioned this in the first clip, but one of the reasons why I like having the cover done more earlier on in the process is so I can add it to my ebook pre-order page and add to Goodreads and just start promoting with actually having physical cover. I know that we definitely do judge books by their cover and I'm a lot more tempted to pre-order something or add it to my TBR when I can see what a book looks like. The next stage in the process would be writing your book or your short story and doing all the edits and the revisions but that's not what this video is about so we're going to move on to doing the book interior. And I know the interior can be a very terrifying part of the process for many people, myself included especially at the start because I know I've seen all these TikTok videos of people designing books, I've seen um, previews from my friends who work in the industry and it's all done on InDesign and for me InDesign is terrifying so I've done my books on Microsoft Word and you may think Microsoft Word that's not done for doing professional book interiors but if you're doing a relatively simple concept it works well and even for my books that were less relatively simple concepts it still worked fine it's just finding the right settings and having a rough idea of how to make it work as simply and easily as possible and also just having an idea of how book interiors should look. Okay so the odd number pages are the right hand page when you look at the book and the even numbers are the left hand page which is kind of confusing especially when you see it, it was like zoomed in to um to page view. So this is your left page this is your right page. I like to start all my books with a blank page because in, especially on Amazon print, print on demand books, if you open it up, it goes straight into the title page instead of like a blank sheet of paper. So I like to add in my own blank sheet of paper. Then we have this like half title page that has just, um, just the book title, which is if you were signing pages, you'd be signing this one, I believe. Immediately followed by, I think this is called an ad card. It's the list of like all the books you've written. 
and um, mine's starting to grow, makes me feel some type of way. On the left page, then on the right hand side, we have our full title page, which is, you know, the same thing just with your author name, immediately followed by a copyright page, which has, you know, first published, when, by who, where, your ISBN, which edition of the book is and when that edition was published, any copyright. I put my um, cover design copyright on the copyright page rather than on the back of the book, but I know some people do it different ways. I don't remember what the industry standard is, but I've gone through as many of my books as I can to try and find something out and it seems to be do what you want. But also I feel like with self-publishing you have a lot more creative freedom, so again do what you want but bear in mind there is probably an industry standard. I also have the copyright disclaimer of this book is a work of fiction. I have mine just saying independently published, I have my website and then I have my little publishing logo for my own publishing company. I also like to have a quote at the start of my book, specifically the ones with the paper forest. So here we have the quote, who it's by, and that will be on the right hand page. And then this would be a blank page, so then your first chapter can begin again on the right hand page. And I've gone for, I've gone for the same forest image that is on the cover of the book, just black and white, slightly more high contrast. Because I think it looks cool and I think it reflects the interior design of Paper Forests. And I wanted my book to actually begin on a full black page just because I think it looks cool. And it's something slightly different to what I've done before and I just want to experiment with something that is reminiscent of the interior design for Paper Forests but also a specific design that could be exclusive to the short stories and it's still interesting and it's still a corner all links together but it's, own, it's its own thing, you know? So we have, instead of a chapter title, we have the character's name in the same font as the cover. We have the T, which is the same font as the cover. And then just into the book. This is the same font, size, style, spacing, everything as Paper Forests. And will probably be maybe all of my fantasy books, because I like to have some kind of cohesive design across the genres. And here we have, again, the foresty image but I bought in this like smoky design that goes on the bottom of the page. It's very subtle, but I wanted something on every page, especially if it's such a short story, you can get away with having a fun design choice over and over again. So we have smoky pages, and that is pretty much all the formatting. It is my personal standard book formatting, my interior design. It's just showing that you can do fun things in Microsoft Word and doing fun things as simply and easily as possible and beginner friendly and affordable and all those good things that we love as independent authors. I think this book ends, yeah I added in another black page just because I didn't want it to go straight from story into about the author. But it ends on, it ends on about the author and I think that is all that the standard front matter, back matter, the things that you need to have in a book. So after I have the cover done and I have the interior formatting of the book done, it's time for me to make like the full wraparound jacket of the paperback. So at this point I know what the book's going to look like and as the interior is done I know how many pages it's going to be and how thick the spine is. So you can go onto your, your favourite self-publishing website, type in your dimensions and you can download a template that will show you the exact cover dimensions, the exact spine dimensions and very importantly the bleed lines around the edges. Here is what my template looks like with my cover underneath, just so you get a vibe of what's going on. And here is just what the cover looks like in general. I just extended the image, the foresty image that I used as a background all the way across because I wanted it to be just like a smooth, solid wraparound cover. And I took the font that I used for my author name and the subtitle on the ebook cover and just used the same font for the text on the back. And I wanted it to be very simplistic, very minimal. So there's not a huge amount of text or information you need for this cover because it is just a short story after all and you know most sane people do not make paperbacks as short stories because they're not worth it because they're so thin but i wanted to go all out for this little project because i want to and i just want to be able to like make a little guide now just as a reference for what my current self-publishing process is so at this point we have the book is written we have the front cover we have the insides and now we have the wraparound cover. So what we have left will be proofs and ebook manuscript formatting. All good. So for the short story, it's going to be released in ebook because it's a short story, it's very short. You don't really need a paperback, especially when it's going to be 30 pages long. However, 
that did not stop me from making a paperback. I will clarify that the paperback, I think like the lowest I can set is was $2.99 or $3.99, which honestly, not worth it. <laughs> so this isn't for other people to buy, this is just for me. Mostly for book interior design and cover design experience, and also I just think it's little and cute. It's so thin you can't put a title on the spine, so we still that's a lot vibranter and darker blue than I was expecting. So looking at the inside, the insides aren't as um, dark as they were on my monitor, which is interesting because this is darker. So I can't tell if this is just because it's a proof copy or if it's like that. You can see these print lines. This is because it's with Amazon KDP, their print quality is sometimes not the greatest. So I designed this cover, I designed the interior. The images on the cover are by, where's my copyright page? Are by Thomas Griesbeck and Alexander Krivitsk, I believe. That is aggressively blue. I'm gonna have to print out the ebook cover and see if it's the same or it's just a KDP issue. But here, cover, there's nothing on the spine. The image wraps around, we have a description. With a barcode, we have my little publisher logo. And inside, it opens into just a picture because otherwise KDB books open straight onto the title page and I don't like that. So, title page, title page and my other books. I like that there's a collection growing now. And copyright page, a quote, because Paper Forest starts with a quote and I quite like that. And then the entire book's not black, don't worry. <laughs> open into that, that's fun. And the bottoms of these pages are meant to have like a smoky misty effect, which you can kind of, you can barely kind of see on camera, but it's not there at all in person, which again, can't tell if it's KDB print quality or if it's just a dodgy copy or if it's just like that. But we don't know. I don't know. We'll never find out. Other than that, this is very cute, very dainty. I do have the urge just to make this a like a full novella rather than a short story, but that's a bit excessive because what I want to do, what I want to do is write many short stories and then release a short story collection. Not all of them will be like individual releases like this. This short story is also going to be in the back of the paper co paper covers, the paper forest hardback that I'm working on, which is what this is for, but I thought I'll give a little individual release just because it's cute. And that hardcover, I don't expect to be coming out until sometime next year, early next year, maybe January, because I'm working with the cover to the artist that will be for my cover art, and I've got to make the cover. And then I have to reformat the book to be the hardback size, and there's other things. So this is just coming out ahead of time, so I think it's cute. And at the end, it goes back into like, the black pages. That's what I wanted to say about this. I don't usually feel the need to order more than one proof copy, because I usually get it right first time, like the formatting and the cover and anything else. But because I want the covers to match a lot better than what I've already got going on, I'll show you. We've got Paper Forests and this one, which is alarmingly blue. And there are some other things I wanted to change. I thought, I'm going to try again and we're going to order another proof copy. Another proof copy, which is a lot better colour match in terms of the saturation and the actual hue of the blue itself. And also, let's put this one down. Let's put them both. No, keep them up. I wanted to like mask out or fade out some areas of the text to match what's going on on here. So it's a bit see-through, you can see some detail through, and it's not just a very bright white, bold, just plain white text. It's got a little detail, it's a little less harmful on the eye to look at. And then on the back as well, I fade out some of the text, just make it more interesting to look at, less harsh on the eye, a little more exciting. So the colour was the main thing that I wanted to fix with this proof copy. And also on the interior, I just wanted to have another look because Amazon's print quality has not been the best recently. So I wanted to go through and just confirm that some issues I was seeing were Amazon and not me. And I had confirmed that Amazon, not me. Like you can kind of see here that the printer, there's just these white lines in places. And I had to go back and just confirm that, okay. It's not just a me issue. And also the quality of the images kind of suck, but they don't on my end. So again, Amazon, but also there's another white line on this one. But I can't tell if it's just because this is a very cheaply, quickly made proof copy or if Amazon's print quality in general has just sucked. Because the print quality on the insides of this also kind of not ideal. 
which is part of the reason why I am I'm going ahead and remaking this into like a fancy special edition hardback through Ingram Spark so it you can have it in bookstores it has its own proper ISBN it will have um global distribution but also hopefully it will have a lot better print quality than this which although it's my baby kind of sucks so yeah I have fixed all the issues that I wanted on this that are in my control and I think that is good for the little paperback I'm very happy with this the next part of the publishing process for me will be to put the ebook together, which is arguably my least favourite part of the process because I feel very limited by the creative options that I have. Over the years, I think I've worked out that the best way to make an ebook is to make it as simple as possible because your number one thing for the ebook is that it has to be accessible across all devices, all screen sizes. And if you are like me and are very tempted to put your exact paperback formatting into an ebook, that really limits your options and is a very negative experience for your reader. So for me, I do just make it as simple as possible, which is if I can use the fonts that I used in my book and use the little the little image that I used to separate my scenes within chapters. That's about it. <laughs> because personally, I don't feel like you need to have all those extra details to enjoy an ebook you just need the story the bare bones but that again is just my opinion i want it as simple as possible as easy to read as possible and not too many images or decorative items that if i changed my font size or my font in general just any little technical aspects i don't want my reading experience to be ruined by that so i'm going to show you what i do for mine what software i use to make my ebooks and all that fun stuff it feels obvious to say, but it's a lot easier to make your ebook when you have finished all your final edits. So I make mine literally last minute, which does not sound very professional, but it's easier that way, especially if you are fixing like very last minute typos, little word choices, all those things, like a week before publication. So you have your final word document, or, or maybe not your final word document, but you have a document with your story or your book in. I personally start off with um, Kindle Create, because let's yeah we're on the first page why does it always say that i need to save my process my progress i personally start with kindle create because i had my ebooks exclusively on amazon and kindle unlimited for a while and only recently i've branched out more because i wanted the option to add my books into libraries the joy of kindle create is that it's so very easy to use you literally just import your word document usually it separates all your chapters nicely you can see that i've only got one body chapter here and then you can go through and it can automatically generate all the front matter that you need. So this way you know you are getting everything right. You just need to put your information in and then you have your title page. We have the copyrights. This copyright I did copy and paste from the front of my paperback and then just changed the IS, the IIS, the I, oh, I can't even say this, the ASIN to the one that Amazon gave me and that's what I had to change on that. Then we have the epigraph, which is the quote that I used. And again, you just, where's it gone? It's there. You just put in your quote and your attribution and it formats it for you. When we go into our chapter, you have all these default settings at the side. So you can just change this to be a chapter title element. Just show you here, first paragraph. No, this is the chapter title, chapter first paragraph, you just it does it all for you you can go in and add the separator this i will probably go back and change to be the same separator that i use in the paperback but for now it's just there and this is literally the extent of ebook formatting you go through just double check like your italics are in the right place your paragraphs are in the right place where your spacing's good and it's just done and then we get down to about the author which again i believe <laughs> i'm looking down around my phone because it's blocking my screen Again, everything is automatically generated for you. We can also go down and add like your other books and change your number of books, put in the description, the Amazon link. This is exclusive for Amazon. If you try to upload this file onto a different ebook website, it will probably get angry that there's Amazon links. However, if you do remove this books by this author page or just remove the link, you can upload the, is it a KPF file? I don't remember which file this ebook gives you, but you can upload it to Calibra or any other book conversion software and it will convert it to a different file type that you can upload to a different website. Making your ebook on Kindle Create is just so very easy and beginner friendly. The software is free, it's easy to download and install, and it just does it. 
you have like very limited um, default themes that they offer you. Let's have a look at those. Yeah, they have these four default themes which aren't very different, it's just like the chapter title font. So again, you are very limited with your creative options, but if I would say if you really wanted to, you can go ahead and change your fonts, but they, I don't believe, offer the font option. You could go through and input images, because the start of the chapter title in my paperback is an image, so you do have the option to go through and add some personalization, you just cannot change specific fonts. But that's fine, because on, on ebooks, on Kindle, I change all my fonts anyway to be something that I like. And that is how easy it is to make an ebook on Kindle Create. The other thing that I found out about more recently is Draft Digital, which have recently added a paperback option, but they usually specialize in ebook distribution. And again, it is a case of uploading your final manuscript, just putting in your details for your pre-order page, or just if you want to go live straight away. And here they have the page, so you can add your standard front and end matter. And I keep wanting to call it back matter because front and back, but I think it's front and end. And again, they just add the, the same as Kindle Create, they just add these like default generated pages and it's very easy to do. You don't even have to input the data half the time because they have their own standard copyright page and their, that's, oh, I didn't need my dedication. Because you've, in, you've already input your metadata and all your title information at this point, they can just do the pages fully for you. You don't even have to input that data again. But then let's go back to the start. Again, your formatting options are very limited, but again, it is an ebook, so you want it to be as simple and accessible and diverse as possible. We have your title page. This function allows you to add the series and the volume number onto the title page. So you can see that this is a short story and also where it is when all the books are out, that this one is after Paper Forests, is before the second book. It's actually immediately after Paper Forests. You go through this page, copyright page. Again, it looks so bland and so boring. But for a very free, easy to use, beginner friendly software, no issues with that for me personally. We have the quote, we enter our first page. Here on the side, you can see that they have these options for your first paragraph. If you want a drop cap or this little capitalized thing, which I, this phrase cap, which I'm awfully fond of. And it also, oh, that skips a section. It also gives you the same option for the next scene, the next main first paragraph to have again if you want a drop cap or a phrase cap, which Kindle Create does not offer, but I feel like you could go in and do it manually if you wanted to. And then they have the option to add some little decorative, a little template, but I'm pretty sure the only thing it adds is this little decoration at the start. I'll show you some. I'm in the mystery and thriller section because this Nevermore theme adds this spooky branch, which I quite like. And this website I'm gonna have to show you because Amazon and Kindle obviously just distribute to Kindle, but if you use draft to digital if we go into here, you, they distribute to a lot of people. They can also distribute to Amazon if you wish, but that would mean that you can't upload it on Amazon specifically and have the Kindle Unlimited KD, KDP Select option. But again, they have great distribution. And I think this is the only time you can get this kind of distribution for free unless you use Ingram Spark, which is not free. But th this overdrive feature is great because it means that I can have this book available to request from my local libraries and library distribution is what I wanted the most because that's very exciting to me as a avid library user. And that is how simple and easy it can be to make ebooks if you are also going for a simple and easy approach. Again, I want to emphasize that it's probably for the best to make your ebooks as basic, not in a bad way, but just as simple and available to use in all devices, all screen sizes, as possible. Keep it simple. <laughs> but again, the temptation to have a fun interior that matches my paperback is there. But again, if someone wants fancy formatting, the paperback is obviously the way to go, or any physical format. The ebook is here for ease of access and accessibility and all those good things. So ebook proof copies, or just reviewing a proof of your ebook which is literally the case of downloading the file onto your device and taking a look. So when I review my ebook manuscripts, I, I usually do it just to check for typos again, because it's on a different device, it's a different screen, it's different how it looks in my manuscript. So it is easier just to see in a different format if there's any errors. Also check the formatting itself, like the indents, the spacing, if there's any like random words where they shouldn't be, things like that, and little images throughout the text. 
and all those issues are fine in my ebooks. But because I had to convert the actual files that are available, convert them into a different format so I can actually open them on Kindle, because Kindle just seems to have done away with a whole bunch of formats, that it isn't the exact same formatting you would get if you buy the book directly from Kindle or another ebook site, because they will be formatted to your device and to a specific layout. Whereas if I convert this file, it kind of restricts the formatting. So it's a thing of, I know it'll be fine when the files are actually downloaded or purchased from Kindle or other ebook retailers. It's just when I look at it on my phone, it's like a little bit off, but I've done it, it's still fine. Should I give you some comparisons of the draft digital? Judge this to this side, KDP this side. So the title page is very basic, pretty much the same. The title pages with KDP, you have a little more creativity of you can insert images, you can play around with the text a lot more, you can play around with the text in general. Whereas Drafts Digital is limited with the options that they provide for you unless you format an ebook as a PDF yourself and upload it, but then you lose a lot of the freedom with devices and accessibility and all those sort of things. And then just just what a random space in the chapter looks like. Draft Digital is fun because you can default set it so it has phrase capitals. KDP is fun because you can insert pictures. The same like little little scene spacings that I use in my book. They're both good for different reasons. They are both pretty much the same thing and they're equally good if you're doing a very basic ebook. So that was my current very easy, beginner friendly, budget friendly, completely free in fact my very easy self-publishing process that I hope might offer a little insight into how to do everything yourself if you are like me and have no one else, no friends, no money, nothing. I hope that's all good. My short story, Paper Ghosts, is out on November 1st and I hope that I'll be back someday soon in the future to talk to you about a full novel release and the process for that and just any other self-publishing tips, hints, advice, anything that you want to hear from me. Thank you for watching and I hope to see you next time. Bye.